Hi, this is lesson 3.3, graphing derivatives and antiderivatives from graphs. And so what we're going to be doing is giving you derivatives, or if, I'm sorry, give you a graph, and then you're going to graph the derivative, f prime, or you might go from f prime to f double prime. So you're going to estimate the slopes and plot them as well. What I like to do is find the zeros. And so let's go right to an example and plot some of this. If I, I have at negative 2, horizontal tangent there. I have a horizontal tangent there also at 2. So at both of those places, I'm going to end up with a slope of 0. So plotting that on f prime, very easy, just make the 0. That's where my derivative is 0, where that slope is 0. So if I look at some other points, going towards the end point, it looks like I got a slope of 1 right about there. That's just before negative 1. And then if I go to my other end point here, what I'm going to end up with is a slope that's bigger than 1, so maybe about 2. So I have a slope of about 2 here, 1 here. I have the same thing over on this other side right about here. This is about a slope of 1. So I can have a slope of about 1 right here. And so I'm going to have another point up there. Now if I look at this point, I'm probably going to end up with a slope of about negative 1. So through the origin here, I have a slope of about negative 1. So I need to plot that as well on my f prime. So this would be, f prime would be negative 1. So if you see the shape here, I get something that looks like that. So that would be a sketch of a graph of f prime. Plot the zeros and then plot some of the other slopes as you go along. And we are approximating, so I did put some values here. But those are approximations. Moving on to number two. When we look at number two, we want to take f prime and then graph f. So we're going to go backwards. We call this the antiderivative. Now we do have some steps here. We can do the number line items that I mentioned here. I'm going to do it both ways, the way I like to do it, and then also show you uh, this way. But uh, let me start off by just doing this example. Now notice, first of all, that this is f prime. And we're going to go ahead and graph f. I'm going to graph f right on here. So what happens is that if I take, and I like to just draw these lines here. These do not deal with vertical asymptotes, but what all they do is section you up to tell you if you are increasing or decreasing. So I took the zeros of f prime and I made all these vertical lines. Now if I notice here, f prime is positive in this interval. And I can do that over here too. This is zero. So f prime is positive here. And then f prime is less than zero here, negative. So that means that from this interval right here that f is increasing. And so I can start and I want to go to this point zero one because they do tell me I'm going to zero one. And then I also can look at the concavity a little bit too, but I'm increasing. Now why did I draw this piece in like this, if I'm just increasing? Why did I have concave up on this first part and concave down on this second part? Well, that's because of the slope. The slope here is going to tell me f double prime. f double prime here is positive. f double prime here is negative. I can put that over on my number line here as well because I'm going to have uh, a problem at negative 2 and also at 2. When I say a problem, it's not really a problem, but the relative max or the relative min of f prime will tell you inflection points on f. And so I'm going to be changing here from positive to negative, then to positive because f prime is increasing here and decreasing here and then increasing there. So that tells me the curvature of what I have right here. Increasing f prime tells me I'm going to be concave up on f. Decreasing f prime is going to tell me that I'm going to be concave down. 
and you can do the chart over here as well to help you on that. Now if, to finish this off, now I'm going to be decreasing and I'm going to be concave down turning to concave up. I think you can see the symmetry here and so I'm going to just go oh, concave down and then round it off. That's pretty bad. But something like that. And so you can graph it right over the top. I like to graph it right over the top because I do have these zeros at um, these points right here, which tell me if I have a relative minimum, even though this is the end point, it looks like it's going to bottom out here. This one would be a relative maximum, and this one would be a relative minimum. And it separates out the intervals of increasing, and then here I'm going to be decreasing. So now you can graph it over there. Three. If I go over here to my number lines, F prime. Okay, so what's happening is I got F double prime here and F here. I'd prefer this in the other order with F first and then F double prime, but oh well, this is what we got. So if I take F prime and look at my values. First of all, my F prime, here is a zero. So that's going to be a relative max or relative min on F. And so F prime is going to go from negative to positive because I'm below the x-axis here, those are negative values, and I'm above the x-axis afterwards. And then if I look at F double prime, well, what's the slope of this? Well, it's a constant. It's a and that constant would be positive. I have a little hitch there at zero. But on the left-hand side, F prime is increasing, so that tells me F double prime is positive on both those different sides. So I'm going to be concave up for F. So let's graph F first. So if I have this line here on F, that's going to develop to be a parabola when I take the antiderivative of this. So I'm going to be doing some sort of curve. I'm going to bottom out at negative 2 because I do have this 0 here. And then I'm going to go up with some symmetry up to the same height there because it is a linear function, which antiderivative would give me my parabola. Symmetrical about 2 or negative 2. So now if you look at this piece here, that looks like a parabola. So the antiderivative of parabola would be a cubic. That's not really going to show very much here, but we are going to end up with some sort of cubic function that is concave up and then is also increasing. Now this right here, I got a little hitch in there or whatever, but there is no sharp point. And why is there no sharp point? That's because my derivative is continuous there, no problems. So there is no sharp point there, and so my derivative does exist at this point right here on the curve. I can't get rid of all these markings, but let's go now to do f double prime. Well, this is just a line, so the slope of the line looks like it's 1. So I'm just going to be plotting 1 all the way here. And I do have some sort of sharp turn here, so my derivative at 0 is not going to exist. So f double prime of 0 does not exist. And then if I look here, here is a parabola. The slope would be about 0 at x equal to 2. So I'm going to start here at 0, and then the derivative of a parabola would be a line, probably a slope of 2, something like that. And I'm going to end up with that right there with a hole in the graph. So that would be the graph of f double prime. So that's how you can kind of go forwards and backwards. I do have another video in the previous section about 3.6. It's not really 3.6 for us, but it's from my AB course. And that helps you also with some of this curvature and drawing uh, functions. All right, I hope you enjoyed this section. And I hope you enjoy the homework gift that I give you as well. Have a great day.